welcome to the show. This week on Downhill Chaos, I'm going to be trying to beat the Sanchez. The Sanchez set an incredibly fast time down here, 114, I believe. Uh, I'm going to see if I can beat it with uh, any vehicles. Now, the Bifter and a couple of other vehicles have already been down this course, and none of them even got near to the Sanchez time-wise. So, these vehicles have been upgraded. They have got the maximum upgrades I can put in them. Engine, gearbox, turbo, brakes, and so on. Uh, just to try and give them a chance to see if any of them can catch up to the Sanchez. The problem uh, when it comes to it, this is the Sanchez has so much grip. It, the, the bikes on here have ridiculous levels of grip. It won't be as fast as these vehicles in a straight line, um, but they should carry more speed through the corners. The Bifter on the first run um, <laughs> had a problem with the Cougar that uh, you don't want to be hitting one of them when you've just sort of taken a jump and you're in the air. It spun the thing around. Uh, and then I proceed to try and find how good the, the, the Bifter is at um, sort of hill climbing. I'm not sure physics should quite allow this. That, that That's... That's a rather steep <laughs> hill that the Bifter has just climbed up. This thing's rear-wheel drive, and it climbed up. Yeah, I, uh, that doesn't make too much sense to me. But uh, either way, the Bifter managed to recover from that little crash. Which uh, the big downside that you get when you use the Bifter is just the, the ride height. This thing is, yes, it's designed for off-road, but it's not designed for this sort of off-road. The suspension is not really not really designed to cope with these kind of bumps and you'll see this vehicle get thrown about huge amounts I, I just cannot get it back under control uh, I get away with it on that on sort of on that bit but it's the next next jump that you land that uh, yeah <laughs> you hit a bump awkwardly in this car you hit it a tiny bit wrong in this and you are gonna have a big accident also this is now even faster we're, we're hiding <laughs> this vehicle is even faster than it was before phenomenal acceleration the brakes on this thing are ridiculous as well so you can brake very very late into corners it has huge amounts of speed it has more than enough speed to beat the sanchez the problem is it can't put the sort of can't use that speed because every time it comes to a corner You've got to be more cautious than, than I would like with this because it just gets thrown about. There's <laughs> nothing you can really do about it. A uh, little bit of luck involved. Again, the final section, I just can't get it. I can't get it stopped. I hit it. I just slightly hit a bump wrong. Like it would get. I would get it stopped. Sorry. Uh, if I'd avoided the bumps, as I said, brakes are amazing on this. But uh, yeah, you just catch a bump even yeah, slightly oh, wrong with a bifter, and you have a really very very big off. Other thing that um, you get a little bit not too bad with the bifter, as you saw on a couple of occasions here, that uh, it does have a habit of going up onto two wheels. This is the fastest run that I got out of the bifter. Took a while doing this it's it's one of those cars that is incredibly fast but it's so so prone to having just just an incident and it will be a different place every time you'll just find a bump uh, a little bit awkwardly and the problem is because of that you end up having to be a bit more cautious you can't attack the course as much as you would like with the bifter because you just never quite know what it's going to do sometimes you'll hit a bump and get away with it other times you won't on this run, everything was going okay so far. Uh, yeah, it's an incredibly fast car, the Bifter. Probably the best overall vehicle, I would say, out of the entire game. Good off-road, good on-road, lots of grip, phenomenal brakes. But it just can't deal with the huge bumps in the same way some of the other vehicles can. The only real downside to the Bifter is that these, these bumps on here are just a little bit too much for the suspension to handle. We go around the final corner on two wheels and it is going to cross the line. It is quick. It is a very quick time from the Bifter. We get huge air time as well over the final jump. However, the Bifter was not quick enough to beat the Sanchez. I will put all of the times up uh, at the end. But the Bifter it tried. It was fast. It's ch you just can't push it as much as you'd like. Uh, if it wasn't so bumpy, I think the Bifter probably could, but uh, the, the, the characteristics of this course mean the Bifter really struggles. Up next, it was the BF injection. Now, admittedly, this car didn't set a particularly fast time the first time that it went down the course. That's not particularly surprising. I think this one was used in the third video, so I'd only done a few, sort of maybe 20 runs down the mountain. Now I've probably done sort of more 200, 300. I don't know how many times I've gone down this, this course in practice or practicing for these runs. Uh, so yeah, I'm a lot more experienced um, with this route. So it should be interesting where this one fits out. Unlike the Bifter, this has actually got some proper off-roading suspension. It can deal with the bumps. 
Uh, the the flip side to that though, as you saw on this first one, is when you have take like a heavy impact after a bump. With the sort of the softer off-roading suspension, sometimes this car's better than some, like the Sand King. Sometimes it will bounce up the other side, and that can cause issues. Although it's certainly nowhere near as bad as the issues uh, caused by the Bifter. Yeah, there are still mistakes. Uh, <laughs> I was pushing this thing pretty damn hard. Still very easy to uh, to get things a little bit wrong. And again, you see there the kind of the jumping that goes on uh, when I try to take that uh, sort of that landing a little bit too fast. Again, this here is fully upgraded race brakes and. Oh, full engine and turbo and gearbox and everything upgrades put on much easier to drive though this i think it was the third time that i got a decent run in this uh, yeah it's an awful lot easier in this vehicle much more suited to this kind of terrain the downsides to the uh, pf injection that for one a little bit more prone to not rolling but going up on two wheels in the bifter it's a rather high well i say a high vehicle it's fairly high vehicle this one with the huge off-road suspension the brakes also aren't quite as good uh, to be fair once you drive a bifter anything you drive after just doesn't quite have the brakes of it um yeah the brakes in this not quite as good acceleration top speed not quite as good as the bifter i don't think however it's much easier to push this you can push this vehicle a lot harder and sort of Feel that you're in control of it. With the Bifter, a lot of the time, it's just sort of pure luck when you're going down some of the fast sections as to what you're going to hit, how you're going to deal with the bumps. Whereas in this, deals with the bumps a lot more smooth. A lot, lot more smooth? Whatever. Uh, it deals with it, yeah, it's a lot easier to drive. Okay, you know, you can still take a little bit of an unlucky impact on the landings and you get this sort of pinging effect with the soft suspension. But it's certainly nowhere near as bad um, as, as the problems you get with the Bifter. Around the final corner and it's wanting to go up on two wheels is always a... Uh, <laughs> Always a scary thing, and around the f the second to last quarter again, it's wanting to go up on two wheels, fighting it a little bit. However, it can carry plenty of speed through this final section, and we are across the line into some bikers, which uh, I unfortunately couldn't stop in time for. One of them, I don't know what <laughs> happened. The yellow bike has sort of clipped the side of my vehicle and went flying. He's fine. He's run off. Um, but yeah, the BF injection again, very quick down the mountain. Uh, made a big improvement from. <laughs> The first time, admittedly, uh, more experience, and this is the highly upgraded version, uh, but still couldn't beat the Sanchez. So I was wondering what actually could beat it. I mean, the two big hopes have uh, have not been fast enough. So perhaps the Adder could. Now this is a little bit of an odd choice, you might think, as this wasn't the fastest of the foot of the sort of the normal road cars. The Bodhi is has been faster down the course than the Adder. However, if anything was going to beat the Sanchez, I would say that it's probably going to be the Adder because. The Sanchez gets its speed through grip through the corners, whereas the Adder can get its speed from a straight line and acceleration. The problem is, you actually have so much speed in the Adder that it becomes, yeah, a bit tough to drive. My first run, I normally that first quarter there is flat out in everything. Um, this has so much acceleration that if you do that, you actually have problems. Uh, again, the speed was proving to be... Um, an issue because uh, it would just pick up so much speed on the straight sections again I was I carried so much speed over that jump when I landed and it went, all, it went sort of all out of control of course this is again on, on road suspension it does get bounced about however it's nowhere near as bad interestingly this is a road car that is nowhere near as bad at being flinged about as the bifter is uh, yeah, a little bit odd. I agree. I suspect this is because this is a bit or quite a lot heavier than the Bifter. Um, again, we're going to have another impressive uh, hill climbing display from the Adder, having fallen off the uh, <laughs> fallen off the course. It gets stopped, turned around, and then climbs back up a near vertical cliff face. Yeah, again, I'm <laughs> I'm not sure that uh, that should work. This jump, the landing for this jump, was proving problematic. In fact, it proved problematic for almost all of these vehicles. As the adder goes for a spectacular roll and then slide on its roof. I think it is just to do with the speed of these cars. They were all carrying so much more speed over that section that uh, yeah, they were having a lot sort of a lot bigger landing, if that makes sense. They're jumping a lot further, that's what I'm, that's what I should have said. And uh, yeah, it was causing problems in the adder. It was causing the most problems for us. This was by far the fastest car we had. A nice double barrel roll and it stuck the landing and everything. Um but yeah, the, the speed was <laughs> it was something to contend with. There were quite a few mistakes just trying to carry too much speed through corners. And, you know, there's always the odd, slightly awkward landing for the Adder. It uh, wasn't the worst of vehicles, though, I've had trying to drive down here. It was it was certainly a different 
so it's sort of a different way of driving a car, as this was all about getting it around a corner and then trying to make it as much time as you could in between the corners on the straights. You can't really, like with the upgrades, you can't carry any more speed really through the tight twisty sections. It's down here, this sort of area, that you have to try and make up that time and this thing accelerates ridiculously fast. It, re it really is uh, very, very fast. It's not that bad handling either. Uh, carry too much speed far too much speed over there, somehow get it stopped and get it turned and get around the hairpin as well. That was another thing with some of these jumps that um, I was braking in sort of normal places and because the, the adder is so fast, then it wasn't quite the right braking point. Again, you can see it does get flicked about a little bit on the um, on the landings, but it is, it's, it's manageable. It surprised me actually this is manageable. It also doesn't have the rolling over problem that some of the other sports cars had. Uh, the Coquette, the Banshee, the Voltic, all of them have had problems with the car kind of wanting to roll over, like such as the BF Injection did. Um, but this one, ne I never had that problem with it. Got the landing much better uh, that time round. It comes towards the final section. This bit here is a little bit tricky with the adder. Uh, you've got to be very, very careful on this. It gets very bumpy towards this final section. You can't carry as much speed as you would ideally like. You can see the car getting thrown around there. And then it is flat out around the corner with an awful lot of speed. <laughs> Couldn't stop it in time to avoid... The cyclists were being a bit mental today. Um, I managed to do another roll across the line. Yeah, the adder was very, very quick as well down the mountain, but still not fast enough, still not fast enough to beat the Sanchez. So we had one last hope, and that is with the June buggy. Uh, lots of people have been saying I should use this vehicle, and um, I was saving it for this pretty much. This is the last real vehicle that stands a chance of, of beating the Sanchez. I don't think there is anything else... Um, that really can. Of course, there are always problems getting used to a new vehicle, and sure enough, on the first attempt, we go um, sliding down the mountain. The the June the June buggy is actually fairly similar to the Bifta in in many ways. The suspension is not quite it's not quite up to this sort of terrain. It's designed for it's designed for off road, but not this sort of level of roughness. And it is again very very easy to have this vehicle spin. The other thing that is a little bit strange, I'm not sure if it's to do with a, like a longer wheelbase or the way the chassis is, it does deal with the bumps quite strangely. It doesn't like them, it gets flinged around and yeah, it's, it's an odd thing to try and drive this down here. Really not, not particularly well suited to this kind of terrain. However, if you get things right, if you put a run together, it is very, very fast. Um, this is unupgraded. Unfortunately, this vehicle does not have any upgrades. You can I went to the, the Los Santos Customs, and you cannot upgrade this car. You can only repair it. So this is the, the standard version of the June buggy, and it is very, very quick. It has very good grip through the corners. However, every run that you do with it, if you get a clean run, there is a certain amount of luck, it seems, involved. You saw there, I, I ran the wheels over the rocks that could easily could so easily have spun the car or caused a crash and again it's not it's not the fastest accelerating i don't think it's not the fastest not the best on the brakes it's just somehow it gets around the course very quickly again got incredibly lucky there lost a little bit of time on the landing by sort of having a sort of a half spin and got away with it though kept kept going on uh, doesn't really like the big jumps particularly again as I said it's very very similar to the Bifter <laughs> running my luck just a little bit <laughs> on this descent again didn't get the landing particularly well couldn't get it turned end up having to take the alternative route and uh, when we come off this jump I get things completely wrong end up cutting uh, cutting quite a large section out of the corner uh, as we around the final corner uh, across the line yes it was a very quick time however did sort of miss the, the final corner on that one, which is a pretty big advantage. You miss out a lot of the bumps uh, that all of the other vehicles have done. So that time, I wasn't really going to count. So I, I restarted and carried on trying to get uh, another run in. And yeah, it was just <laughs> dealing with these bumps. There are a lot of very similar crashes between the vehicles. I think it's to do with... They were fairly, fairly equal on... Uh, sort of like the, the, the speed, the acceleration in between corners. Of course, the adder is the fastest as we have a big explosion with the June buggy. The, the All of the off-road vehicles, though, were fairly even on kind of the acceleration front, much faster than they would have been uh, the previous times I drove them down. Again, another landing, and I just about get away with it, being bounced around all over the place. Can't get away with that one, though. And it's just that sort of thing. You just have to run a couple of a couple of centimeters wider than you did previously and it will throw these cars around and you can get away with that if I was in the BF injection with that you could get away with it the downside is BF injection not quite as good on the brakes and you lose time 
uh, in that again another spin with the uh, the June buggy at the start of the course. Uh, yeah, the the buggies, uh, the June buggy and the Bifter both took uh, quite a while to get just sort of a clean run because it was it was just sort of random little mistakes uh, in all in different places that were very very hard to to sort of account for. Uh, I did get a another clean run with the June buggy down here. Um, yeah, this one wasn't as quick as the first one. I'm not sure how much of that is down to the final corner, how much of it, uh, how much time I made up by taking that route. I would imagine quite a bit, as I missed, <laughs> I missed quite a, quite a bumpy, quite a nasty section of the course. Uh, again, a lot of cars were going wide over that jump. I think because uh, I have a, a sort of a set point and a set way I break for that now. I've spent so long, <laughs> so long doing that. I was doing that with these vehicles that are much faster than normal, and uh, yeah, I was overshooting that a few times. I had to be a little bit careful with this on the jumps again much like the bifter it was very hard to push this vehicle to try and go really really fast on this route because every time you did you sort of would end up kind of land again we got another slightly bumpy slightly tough landing of these it was so easy to make silly little mistakes and um, with these and if you make it one mistake on this run it's very rare you get away with it <laughs> i run very wide i was incredibly lucky again on there as we come down the final section get the vehicle stopped and uh, yeah this is where I stick in still miss some of the bumps on there and uh, we go around the final corner and the June buggy has made it down the mountain in a sort of legitimate time if you like and uh, a lot of the vehicles actually were struggling to get stopped they were carrying so much speed over that jump that uh, yeah they were landing quite a lot further down uh, than the normal the normal vehicles do uh, anyway when it comes to the times as you can see nothing has really got close to the Sanchez, nothing's even beaten the quad bike. The June buggy's tire there with the asterisk, that is the one where I cut the final corner. Uh, the one without the final corner cut uh, is a 119.6. The June buggy, interestingly, despite having no upgrades, went faster than the Bifter, the Adder, and the BF Injection. They're all running full upgrades, and those three actually set remarkably similar times. They are <laughs> they're really very very similar times. And when you look at these, yes, I could I could probably make a little bit more time if I spent forever just keep going down that run. You. May get them a little bit faster. I'm not going to make up six seconds. There is, <laughs> there is no way I'm going to make up six seconds on to, to to catch up to the Sanchez. I don't think any of the road cars are ever going to beat that Sanchez's time. I don't think it's possible, and I don't think the quad bike would either. You can't upgrade the quad bike, and the quad bike was a pretty damn good run with that to get that time. So yeah, I think. I think the Sanchez is going to be the fastest vehicle. I really don't think. If, if none of them, highly upgraded, can uh, can get near the Sanchez, I really don't think anything else will. Um, however, that is it for this episode of Downhill Chaos. Uh, next week, we'll definitely be using the Roosevelt, Roosevelt however it's pronounced. Uh, people want to see that, so we will give that one a go. And let me know what other vehicles you want to see thrown down the mountain. I, I doubt we are going to to beat the Sanchez ever. However, it will be interesting to see uh, where some other vehicles fit in to the leaderboard. Anyway, that is it for now. So thank you for watching. And until next time, goodbye.